Hi everyone, thanks for tuning in. We're talking about underwater photography using a compact camera and no strobe, just available light. Now we've already talked about exposure. In this series we're talking about focus. We've already talked about how to lock your focus onto the subject. In this episode, I'm going to discuss the importance of avoiding motion blur. In other words, we have to keep our shutter speed fast enough to avoid a blurred image from our subject moving or from our camera moving while the shutter is open. So let's check it out. So the first problem with focus with a compact camera is not focusing on the subject. We talked about locking your focus and recomposing the image. The second problem is blurred image from motion blur. I did not stop the action. And that's what we're going to talk about in this video. I'm going to explain how in underwater photography with available light, once we lock our focus on the subject, there's one other thing we need to be concerned about to get a clear image. We need to be concerned about our shutter speed and the potential for motion blur. Now in this video I will explain and demonstrate basic principles. In later videos I will show how I actually make the adjustments when I'm diving underwater and how to do it. Now in earlier videos we learned about the exposure triangle and how we have to, with available light, we have to juggle shutter speed, aperture, and ISO to get adequate exposure, not too dark. Well, in general, a fast shutter speed is good because it stops the action and prevents motion blur. Now keep in mind, if we are shallow on a bright day and we have lots of available light, we can usually have a very fast shutter speed and have a, an adequate exposure and we don't have to worry much about a blurred image from motion blur. This turtle was ascending to get air. It was a bright sunny day and it was at about 15-20 feet depth, pretty shallow. I simply locked my focus onto the turtle, recomposed my image, depressed the shutter all the way and got a tack sharp image. It's beautiful. My shutter speed could, could be quite fast. I still got adequate exposure and I got a nice clear shot. No flash or strobe. However, in underwater photography, we are often in somewhat low light, at greater depth, at dawn or dusk, under a dock, inside a wreck. And if we have no strobe or flash, which is what this series is about, in order to get an adequate exposure, sometimes our shutter speed has to be slow, and this can result in motion blur. Now here, I was kind of shallow, but in low light at dusk. I focused on this beautiful turtle's head, but the image is blurred, even though I locked my focus. It's because my shutter speed was too low. The turtle and my camera were, were moving a little bit during the 1 30th of a second that the shutter was open to get enough light, to get proper exposure, and the, I got motion blur. When we're in lower light, we need to understand the exposure triangle. We have to adjust our ISO, our aperture, and the shutter speed so we have enough light, yet we still need a fast enough shutter speed to stop the action. Now, actual shutter speed numbers for a sharp image can vary. They might be as slow as 1 to 20th of a second, or we might need a shutter speed of 1 to 100th of a second or faster. And I will show examples of this and how I quickly make decisions about various exposure triangle settings in an upcoming video. However, I would like to explain that we almost have to understand one other thing. We need to know that the actual acceptable shutter speed needed to stop the action can vary quite a bit depending on two other factors. One is magnification, whether we are zoomed out or zoomed in, and the other is the degree or how fast our subject or camera are moving. So let's talk about magnification. If I am zoomed out, low magnification, such as a wide angle in this image, I can have a somewhat slow shutter speed. In this case, 1 30th of a second. Everything's clear. But if I am zoomed in, like a telephoto or higher magnification, any motion blur is magnified. Here, my shutter speed was too slow to freeze any subtle camera movement, and even though I carefully locked my focus on the octopus's eye, I got a blurred image with available light from motion blur. My camera was moving a little tiny bit, probably from some surge or current or just me moving. In addition to magnification like zoomed out or zoomed in, the other factor that determines whether you need a faster shutter speed is how much movement there is. Our camera, like from surge or current, or the eel, or the subject. Here, this eel was swimming fast enough such that I got a blurred image from motion blur, even though I locked focus onto its head. So getting back to the exposure triangle, in high light, we can use a very fast shutter speed to stop the action and still have enough exposure to avoid an image which is way too dark. However, in under, underwater photography, we are often in a low light setting. And if we use a fast shutter speed to stop the action, our image is often way too dark. 
we need an even faster shutter speed if we are zoomed in, like telephoto, or if there is a lot of camera or subject movement. Now, we can make adjustments by opening our aperture or increasing our ISO, but there are costs to this as well. We lose depth of field with a large aperture and we get a grainy or noisy image with a high ISO. Now I'm going to show you how to solve these problems in upcoming videos. Okay, I will explain the simple and most effective way I have learned to get both good exposure and a clear image with a compact camera and no strobe by shooting in a mode called Aperture Priority Mode. So thank you very much for your attention. I hope you found this helpful.